Hey folks, today we're doing Python. I've got the Intel Core i9 versus the MacBook Pro with the M1 Max. This is the 12th generation Intel box, so it should be fast. Now, I've already done this test, and all I gotta say to you is uh, which one of these is faster? Well, it depends. It really does depend on whether you're using Windows or Linux. <laughs> and also whether it's plugged in or not. So I'm gonna show you a couple of things here. Those diehard Linux fans, you can, you're dismissed. You know it's gonna be faster, so you can just go, go on to watch one of my other videos. But for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, let me show you. I've got this site called Benchmarks Game, and if you've been here before on this channel, you know what it's all about. Basically, this lists a bunch of different algorithms in, in different languages, and this one in particular is called Mandelbrot. He was a mathematician that created the fractals pattern, so this is going to be an implementation of that. It's very, very CPU intensive. It's gonna take up all the cores and use them all up while it's running, so very cool. That's what we wanna see, that's what we wanna test, and this is implemented in Python. I'll leave a link to this down below in case you want to run this yourself and check it out. And in case you want to see what the code looks like, here it is. Okay, so I've just basically copied and pasted the whole thing right into my editor, Visual Studio Code right here, and I've created a directory with one file in it. We're gonna run it now. So I've got both of these set up, ready to run. Now on the Mac, I can do time and then Python, Mandel, and I'm gonna give it 16,000 as the parameter. That's the suggested parameter on that web page. So it takes a decent amount of time to run. That's the one I'm gonna use. The time command that I prepended here will basically time the execution of this. And this particular algorithm, this implementation of it spits out all kinds of junk to the console. So I'm gonna redirect that to dev null so that we don't see it and it doesn't interfere with the timing. Now on Windows, I'm running in PowerShell and I have to use measure command in order to time it. The way we do that is use measure command commandlet and inside of the squiggly brackets, I can give the same exact command, which is Python mandel py. 16,000 and by default this one swallows up the output so I don't need to worry about that and we've got our friend the Schwarzenegger yes that's right he's back it's a bunch of fingers attached to a board that I made to execute these at the same time because it's more fun that way whoa I'm back ready to go and enter they're off to the races we'll see how long this takes <sighs> kind of boring without the output and I'm just staring at a blank screen nothing's happening but things are happening believe me you can tell by the temperature readout on the M1 Max, which hit almost 100 degrees Celsius there. The fans were spinning pretty fast at about 2000 RPM, and now the fans are turned off because it's done. This one is still chugging away. Intel, 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 12th generation. Not so impressive, is it? But just wait, just wait. There's a couple of tweaks we can do on the Intel box that'll make it a little bit faster. I know it's not done yet, but I'm speaking out of turn here. However, let's just go over the results here on the M1 Max, which is 35 seconds. Notice the M1 Max is not plugged in. It's basically always performing pretty much the same way. We got a result on the Intel machine, and the result is 86 seconds. So 35 seconds on the M1 Max versus 86. Pretty big difference. Oh, oops, did I forget to plug it in? Well, let's plug in the Intel machine and see what happens. I'm gonna run the exact same thing without changing anything. The only difference is now it's plugged in. And I might as well run the M1 Max to see if we get consistent results, which we will. The M1 Max Bangkok Pro is done at 35 seconds, yet we're still waiting for this one over here on Windows. Okay, a little bit better, 57 seconds. So when you're using one of these laptops, this is a great laptop, by the way, the XPS, the XPS 15 by Dell, very good laptop. You should not think twice if you're considering it, you're gonna get what you're gonna get. It's a good laptop, but if you want the best performance, make sure you have it plugged in, okay? We're not done yet. We already saw an improvement to 57 seconds. Now this is running inside PowerShell, inside of the uh, Miniconda environment that I have installed. It's for setting up and executing Python environments. However, Windows gives us the ability to run Linux inside of it called WSL, Windows Subsystem for Linux. Well, I've set that up as well. Basically, this is running Ubuntu inside of Windows. So let's check that out. I have the exact same test with the exact same code here. And here I can use the time command because, well, it's Linux, so it has the time command. So let's execute that, Python, Mandel, same parameter, and I'm gonna shoot that off to dev null. Now, if I run it in Linux here versus the M1 Max, at the same time, let's go. Any guesses who's gonna win? Go ahead, write it down. Write down your guess. It's about to get real hot in here. This one's already hitting 100 degrees Celsius. Fan is spinning at 1500 RPM. 
This one's still being quiet. I'm a little suspicious, but it is plugged in. Now check it out. 35 seconds on the M1 Max. Again, pretty consistent. 40 seconds on this one. We're down to 40 seconds and we're on Windows. And even though we're on Windows, using WSL versus the Windows version of Miniconda and Python, we're saving so much more time and getting so much more performance out of that just by using Windows subsystem for Linux. I'm gonna run this one more time just so that we are getting consistent numbers and notice that it's still slower than the M1 Max. But there's one more thing we can do. I'm gonna show you that. And they're both done, 35 seconds, just like always on the M1 Max and 41 seconds on the Core i9 machine with Windows subsystem for Linux. Let's do that one last thing. I'm gonna log out of Windows and I'm gonna restart the computer because I've set this up as a dual boot machine. So now I can boot directly into Ubuntu and we're gonna run the exact same test just on bare metal Linux. All right, I've set it up. We'll get the Schwarzenegger out for old time's sake and let's go. <laughs> Good to have a little fun with these things, right? How else do you make benchmarks interesting? I'll tell you how. This is how. 35 seconds on the M1 Max, 30 seconds on the Core i9 with the Intel machine on bare Linux. So yeah, to get the best performance out of a PC laptop and you're running Python that's CPU intensive like this, you might wanna consider testing your specific program on Linux installed on bare metal. Now just for kicks, I wanna unplug this and also run this test on Linux while it's unplugged. Let's go. Ho ho ho. Wow. I did not expect that actually. M1 Max is the same, 35 seconds, but this one is one second faster at 29 seconds. Of course, that's negligible, the difference between those, but apparently it doesn't matter in this case if you're on Linux, if this is plugged in or not. So Windows itself is doing some severe damage to your performance. Firstly, if you're not plugged in. And secondly, I don't know what else it does to slow down the execution like that. By the way, in Linux, I do have performance set to performance mode under power settings, not balanced. So the battery is probably going to last, oh, I don't know, an hour. I haven't done that test yet. While the M1 Max MacBook Pro will still give me all day performance. So there are some things to consider there. Hope this video was entertaining or educational or both. If it was, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more content like this. I'll see you next time.